So at this moment in time, we are ready to implement the CSS to make this start working. Now, if you remember in the last video, we set up our first three triggers or thumbnails, but we still had all the overlays still being displayed. So we want to go about correcting this, and the way we can do that is to now implement some CSS. Just to remind you though, it was so easy for us to just implement a couple of lines of code to make the overlay work with jQuery tools. It's really quite simple. So we've got all that in place, now let's take some time to actually create the CSS to make this thing look the way it's supposed to. All right, first thing we need to do, and you're going to really be surprised at how much of this particular effect is controlled with CSS. There's really a lot going on in here. So first thing I would instruct you to do is to create a new file, and I'm just going to create a new CSS file, and here it is. Let's save the file before we even write anything on it and I'm going to ask you to go to your progress and you'll see in the CSS there's only two right we don't actually are not really concerned with the slideshow CSS because that dealt with the slide tabs but here I want you to just give it the name overlay basics.css so let's save that all right now inside of our HTML page, the overlay HTML page, let's copy this link reference to our existing CSS. You'll notice that the one that was being used for the slide tabs was taken away when I prepared this for you. And now I want you to just come in here and write in overlay-basics. So overlay-basics dot CSS that's perfectly fine and we're good to go with this information alright so now whatever we do inside here is going to be applied inside of our overlay effect okay so let's just familiarize ourselves with the names of the classes that we were working with remember that the thumbnails are called triggers we'll deal with that last but the first thing I want to deal with is the overlay information so the overlays themselves the main container has a class called simple overlay and these IDs are re related to the relative attribute here called frog1 ID frog1 and if you remember that's all related to this little line of script which says look any image based on its rel attribute set that into an overlay so that's what we're doing here alright so what we want to first and foremost be addressing is this simple overlay class so you can copy that if you want to you don't really need to but here is our overlay basics.css so the first thing I want to really be addressing and here I'll just uh, put in a simple comment first just to make this a little easier we'll uh, say the overlaid element All right, so with that information ready and ready to go, I'm just going to put a dot before my simple overlay tag. So I'll come in here. We can close that as well. But within this information, actually, let me just close it this way. There's a couple of things that I want to do. So first of all, let's put in just some comments to help us work with this and you know have us understand exactly what's happening so the first comment I'm gonna say must be initially hidden and if you remember the reason why we want to do this is so that when we first come to that page we don't want to see those overlays inside of the article that's where they are but we want to hide them and only have them become visible when the thumbnails are clicked. So the first thing we need to do is to just say display and we'll give it a value of none. Pretty simple. Not really any kind of problem. Actually if we save this just to get into what exactly is going on, aha! Look at that. So we've got our three thumbnails here but all of a sudden all of those overlaid 
sort of elements with the larger pictures and the text are gone. Beautiful. Okay, that's exactly what we needed. Now we're going to implement some other information. When we do, in fact, bring those things up, we've got to make sure that they are always going to be on top of all the other elements. So I'm just going to put in another comment here that says place overlay on top of other elements. Okay, so in order to do that, we're going to work with Z-index. And the Z-index, well, you can make it whatever you want, but just to make it, you know, pretty clear that it's going to be on top, let's give it a value of something ridiculous, like 10,000. All right. So now that that's done, as you'll see, if we were to, let's save this first, and then if we were to preview this in our browser, when I click on one of these, hey, look at that. The overlay is on top of everything else. Cool. We still need to address a couple of things, like working with those shadows and getting this information to appear on the side here. So let's continue in that vein. In order to style this properly, we are going to include now a small little comment here that just says styling. So let's see what we can do with the styling of this element. And what I'm going to just create first and foremost is a background color. So this background color, well, let's just give it a, um, let's see, 333 is what I'm using for the dark area behind everything. In other words, the background. So we could just as well use that. A couple of other things, I mean, certainly you could save this as you go along, and you can see now that if we were to open this up, there you go, got this box, and it's positioned there with a background color. But we have elements like Killer Frog not really showing up, and our text not really showing up, and it's also too big. So how do we get around this? Well, we're going to come back here, and first of all, let's address the width. So within the styling area, I'm just going to say width. And that width, let's set it to 675 px pixels. Along with that, we can also give it a min height. Now, what's min height actually mean? Well, you know, if by any chance there's not an image available, we're going to say, you know, specify that it has a minimum height of, well, 200 px, 200 pixels. With that as well, I'm going to give it a simple little border just so you could see it a little bit better. And that border, I'm going to come in here and we'll just give all the declarations in one. So we'll say 1px, one, one pixel border that is solid. And I'm just going to give it triple six for the visual amount. And again, we could also save this and come in here and preview that in Safari and check it out. So all of a sudden now you got a border around it as you can see there's that thin little line but we also want to now be moving the details information over here and we also need to implement a closing button among other things but just right now isn't that super isn't that fantastic really easy to implement and really easy to manipulate. All right, um, the last thing that I do want to address before we move on to another class is CSS3 styling. Uh, for latest browsers. Okay, and what kind of CSS3 styling do we want? Well, here I'm going to be addressing the drop shadow effect. Now you could do this as well without the CSS3 styling, but then you would need to be working with, you know, transparent graphics and stuff like this. And I'm trying to give you the most simplest way of doing this and the most future forward uh, method. So in here, I'm just going to say moz box shadow. And let's give it a value of zero. You don't need the pixels when you're saying zero. 
um, zero again. This is for the X and the horizontal vertical uh, shadow amount. Uh, I'm going to give it a 90 PX blur. And for Mozilla, we could also say like a 5 PX uh, spread, though we don't really need all that information, but I'm just including it here for now. Uh, along with this, and I'm going to just copy this information for a second, I'm also going to be addressing the WebKit box shadow. And in here, the only thing I'm going to change is I don't really need to address the spread, so I'm just going to leave it like that. So if we save this and we preview this in Safari now, well, you could see a couple of things. Well, first of all, you can notice that there is a drop shadow, and I'm in Safari, so that's why I'm seeing this. It's a WebKit browser, so that's working really well. So let's come back in the next video, and I'm going to show you how to implement the close buttons and also what we can do with the triggers.